Every one of us wants Jannatul Firdaus. We want to enter paradise and we want it to be easy. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us of several categories of people who will enter Jannah without reckoning, no reckoning, VIP. You arrive on the day of judgment before the accounts. There are certain categories who will be told, come over, you can go through. Subhanallah. Wouldn't it be interesting for us to know who these people are so that we can try to be from among them? So there is a hadith wherein the Prophet ﷺ has said that on the day of judgment, before the reckoning, a caller will call and he will say, Sayalamul Jam'u Man Aula Bil Karam. The people today are going to know who is of honor, who is generous, who is truly generous. And here it's referring to the generosity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in forgiving people. Then he will call Fayunadi Munadin. The same caller will call and he will say, where are those who used to praise Allah upon all conditions, be it difficult or easy? The hadith says they will stand up and they will be few in number, not so many. And they will be told to enter Jannah without reckoning. No reckoning for you. Before we start taking reckoning, you used to thank us upon all conditions. As a result, we are giving you entry into Jannah. No reckoning. Subhanallah. Now, before I get to the next category, and I'm only going to talk of those two, let me dwell on this particular category because we can be from among those. We need to try to be from among those in the mercy of Allah. When they say, Wahum Qalil, they are a few. You know, there have been trillions of people on earth. Perhaps if there are a few million, it might be considered they are a few, but we may be from among them. May Allah make us from among them. Thank Allah upon all conditions. Thank Allah upon all conditions. So if goodness comes to you, thank Allah. If something bad happens to you, thank Allah. People find that difficult. Sometimes you have a good deal and you are thanking Allah. It's a little bit easier. But when you have a tough day and when you've suffered a loss and when you've been through divorce and when you've lost a child and when you've had an accident and when you just simply cannot get married or you're having marital problems or for example, you don't have children or you have struggled and suffered because of the loss of your parents and your siblings and your loved ones and whoever else it may be on earth. Then to to say Alhamdulillah is not so easy. Allah says, if you still say Alhamdulillah and you look at those who are in a worse condition than you, you deserve Jannah. Allah says, we sent you on earth to test you. When we test you and you say Alhamdulillah, this test, I will manage it by the will of Allah. I will ace it. Subhanallah. That's the wording used sometimes by us. We're going to ace this, you know. For the sake of Allah, we ace things as well. We make sure that we thank Allah upon all conditions. And we will know that if you have made some money, a day will come when you have to suffer a loss. Take it in your stride. Pick up the pieces. Work hard again. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Ala kulli hal. I praise Allah upon all conditions. There is another hadith. The Prophet ﷺ, it is reported that he used to say, Alhamdulillah ala kulli hal wa a'udhu billahi min hali ahlin nar. Praise be to Allah upon all conditions. And I seek the protection of Allah from the condition of the people who will be cast into hellfire. That's the only thing I'm worried about. Cast into hellfire. In this world, look at what happened to Rasulullah. They boycotted. He said, Alhamdulillah. They didn't believe in him. He was concerned. He made dua, but he was thanking Allah. In Ta'if, whatever happened, he still thanked Allah. He lost his wife. He thanked Allah. He lost his children one by one. He thanked Allah. It's not easy. You lose your child, beloved to you, your father, your mother, whoever else, beloved to your heart, to say, Alhamdulillah. Inna lillahi ma akhada wa lahu ma a'ta wa kullu shay'in indahu bi ajalim musamma. Indeed, to Allah. Allah belongs whatever he gave me in the first place. It was always his and for him belongs whatever he took away. It was always his. He just gave me a time to be with whatever gift he gave. And Alhamdulillah, I'm thankful that he gave me. You have a father who's been with you for 10 years, 15 years. Thank Allah. Other people have had no father from the very beginning. Look at Rasulullah He was born. His father had already predeceased that date. It mustn't be a sense of our distress. We need to thank Allah. We need to go forth and praise Allah subhanahu this is why the Prophet ﷺ tells us that on that day, part of the generosity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be that he will call out those who used to thank him. Now we ask again, why will he call them out? What's the secret? 
the reason is they understood that everything comes from Allah and it's in Allah's control. The minute you understand that and live by it, you worshiped Allah upon the highest degree. The minute I realize a robber came, a thief came, I broke a bone, that happened, lost something, tire burst, car accident, a loss, whatever losses it may be. When you understand and realize Allah is in full control, you have no option but to say Alhamdulillah, it depicts your top level of Iman, highest level of Iman. Those who praised Allah upon days of ease and days of hardship, war, hunger, famine, fear, whatever it may be, just say Alhamdulillah, thank Allah. Now, the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ teaches us also that you must always look at those who have less than you. That will be so great a gift of Allah that it will make it easy for you to actually thank Allah. That's what it is. Now it brings me to the next one. I told you we're going to talk about two qualities. So the caller called and he called out those who were thankful to Allah upon all conditions. And he said, come out, you go to Jannah before we start with the reckoning with the rest of them. Okay. There's a second category. Where are those who used to at night forsake their beddings, worshiping Allah, calling out to him when everyone else was asleep. And they used to call out to Allah with a sense of hope and a sense of fear. Where are they? So those are the two categories. One is Those who used to praise Allah upon all conditions, good and bad. And secondly, those who forsake their beddings at night, which means you get up, you know, imagine Allah is telling you, are you ready to sacrifice your sleep? If you are, Jannah is yours. How pleasurable is sleep? You're tired, they call it, you hit the sack. They literally say, hey, I'm going to hit the sack. I'm looking forward to a good sleep. Allah says, if you can cut that sleep for my sake halfway and you force yourself up and you start crying on the sajjada, what are you doing? That's a sign of your closeness to Allah. It cannot happen by someone who's not close to Allah. And sometimes Allah creates a need in your life so that he forces you to get to that level where you start navigating through different acts of worship and it makes you end up getting up at night. You taste the sweetness of it and you don't give it up. So let's try and get up at least once a week, inshallah. Is it difficult? Once a week, we get up at night, everyone's sleeping, cry on the musalla for a while, some units of prayer, tahajjud, and go back once a week. See how the sweetness of it will come. If not once a week, even start off once a month. Once a month, it's not too much to ask. There's nothing hard and fast to say how many days. This is just a suggestion from me. But this is when we will earn Jannatul Firdaus. And these are some of the people who can enter Jannah without reckoning. And not that they were forgiven after reckoning, but before the reckoning commenced, they were already picked out. Where are those? They, they stand up. They were little. So the last part of the hadith says, those who used to forsake their beddings, they will stand up as well. And they will also be few in number. And they will be told, enter Jannah before we start reckoning with everyone else. One once they go into Jannah, the reckoning will be with the rest of the people there. Allahu Akbar Kabira.